What's up, everybody? Welcome to Unscripted Access, episode number 145. You're here with your host, Dick Bacalis. On this week's show, we have Anthony Toff. Hi. And Bronson Fiore. Hello. All right, so let's go ahead and dive into the news for this week. So this little event called Tokyo Game Show has been going on. I don't know if you guys have heard of it. Um, but it's pretty much the <clears throat> E3 of Japan. And some surprising news has come out. We're going to discuss that. The PlayStation 4 is getting a price cut in Japan only for now. Sony has announced that the PlayStation 4 will be getting a price cut to 35,000 yen, which comes out to around $300 in the region starting October 1st. So first thing I think here is that's kind of funny you announce a price cut, but it's in the future. So pretty much you're saying that, oh, our sales are going to drop for the next couple weeks because no one's going to buy one until the price drops. So I don't really understand the thinking process there of dropping the price, but it not going into effect immediately. Um, I think that's a little bit weird. Um, but yeah, so the PlayStation 4 is getting a price cut, about $100 US dollar difference in Japan. Does that mean we will be getting a price cut soon? What are your guys' thoughts on it? If they are still a number one seller in in America, I don't think it will happen until it is threatened. Then they will cut the price. That's my guess. Yeah, like, in the States, it's going to be a last-minute thing. Yeah, but it's the number one selling console in Japan as well, correct? Yeah, but the thing is, uh, how do I put this? Let's just say that what they do in Japan doesn't exactly quite apply to America. And... Same thing, what happens in Europe probably doesn't apply to the rest of the world. Because in America, it's like, if you're the one, number one selling system by a significant margin, and you're still the number one selling system by a significant margin, and your closest competitor is still really far away, even though they are selling a system that is quite a ways cheaper than you, why lower the price? Yeah, like, um, this, like this, was, Sony, this was surprising like, for me, because like you said, it's the number one selling platform, so why would Sony do this? My only, like, thinking process on why this would happen in the U.S. is the fact that last holiday season, the Xbox One beat out the PlayStation 4 due to, due to all the bundles. You know Microsoft's going to do the same thing where they're going to have insanely outrageous, awesome bundles. And Microsoft has a lot of games this holiday season, whereas Sony does not. They Microsoft have, Microsoft has a lot of bundles this season already. Like they have a it. bundle for just about every big release. It feels like like last year. Yeah, look at the games coming. So Forza is what is Forza out yet? It's yeah. Forza, can, Forza came out Tuesday. Yeah. So Forza's out. So for racing fans, Sony still doesn't really offer anything. Like you could say Drive Club, but no. Um, you've got <laughs> you've got Halo. I mean. Oh, well, so right now, I just pulled up the Xbox uh, con- like website for bundles because they they have like a full list, and there's Halo Five, FIFA, Madden, Gears, Forza, and Connect, and Elite, which is the one where it comes right. with a bigger hard drive and the special controller. Um, yeah, so pretty much. Yeah, they have a bundle for every big game but Tomb Raider. And... Pretty much. Like, I, yeah, like, that's, you know, so, I mean, if you, like, unless you're a Tomb Raider fan, you, you can get your game with the system. Uh, granted, the Halo one is $500 versus the rest, which are 4 So. And you know there's going to be crazy Black Friday deals. Oh, uh, for sure. So it really just comes down to if Sony is wanting to win the holiday season, they have one of two options. Well, actually, no, really, their only option is to drop the price because I was going to say they could put out a crazy bundle, but what bundle are they going to put out? They haven't really had any big games. I mean, uh, yeah, what? technically, I mean, maybe they'll do like, maybe they could do like a crazy bundle with like Star Wars Battlefront where you get like a PlayStation 4. Yes, you take a King bundle. Yeah, take a yeah. King like. To taking like Destiny is that is it, like it's on Xbox, but it's very much seen as a PlayStation. Game. <laughs> the best Destiny experience is only on PlayStation. Remember that, guys. Um, <laughs> uh, like, yeah, uh, them playing have, on the slogan. 
Uh, I like the Destiny Taken King bundle as a thing over on PlayStation, and then they have the Star Wars bundle, which has like Darth Vader on the side of the system and comes with uh, Battlefront and a special Star Wars controller and. Uh, I think it's like a month of plus, I believe. Oh, here we go. It comes with uh, the fully, like, the Darth Vader PS4, a Darth Vader PS4 controller, uh, the deluxe edition of Star Wars Battlefront, and four classic Star Wars games. Super Star Wars, Star Wars Racer Revenge, Jedi Fighter, and Bounty Hunter. Yeah, so, I don't know, maybe they'll have a Black Friday deal where you can get that, because what's the price on that bundle? It is four fifty. So maybe Black Friday you'll be able to get it for like three eighty or something, and maybe they'll sell a lot of those. I just, it just all comes down to the fact that the only reason Sony would drop the price is if they want to have a chance at winning the holiday season, because if what? they don't, then there's no debating who's going to win the holiday. There's no, there's no question, because... The Xbox One's more affordable, they have more games, they have bigger titles coming out, they're going to have crazy bundles, whereas Sony's just kind of sitting back and be like, yeah, next year we have Uncharted, and we yeah, have Horizon. There's, there's two so, reasons why I could see them price cutting. One, further establish their dominance by saying, now PlayStation's more affordable, so everybody come by now. And, uh... And, like, like yeah, the they just, like, they could, like, do it just to extend the lead, which... Kind of made sense. You kind of want your system everywhere because that in itself is it's a marketing. Well, yeah, because then like you're looking to buy a system or you're a kid looking to ask for one for Christmas. Oh, I want to play with my friends. All my friends have PS4s. I'm going to ask for a PS4. It kind of bums me out that everyone has a PS2 and I never owned one. Um, so there's that in there. <laughs> yeah, so how long has the PlayStation 4 been out? It's been out for, what, a year? Almost two, two years, almost two It'll years two now. It'll be two years in November. It'll be two years in November, uh, and same thing with the Xbox One. They came can out you imagine? <laughs> Sorry, I'll tell you. Can you imagine in the 90s, two years would mean you're at the halfway point already? God, that's if so it, weird. If it was the 90s. That is so weird to think about. Like, yeah. Yeah, yeah. That, that is, that's super weird when I think about that. But, uh... Yeah, so it's pretty much at the point where it's like, okay, so it's been out for about two years. There's been no price cuts. So at this point, I guarantee you, because technology, technology gets cheaper with time. So I guarantee you the cost of the PlayStation 4 is probably went down 100 bucks. Oh, yeah. So they, but obviously that extra $100 goes into their profit margin. So it just becomes a situation where it really well, comes down to, because I mean, so, PlayStation is still outselling the Xbox One. Still, well, every like single if, month. If you look... If you look at the PS4 right now, it is on PS2 pace. Like, that is crazy. This thing is on pace to do PS2 numbers. So, like, they have no real reason to cut price. Right, yeah, their only reason would be to say, oh, we want holiday season, but that's not really... Or, we want to extend the lead. Or yeah. even further. Like, that, it's because kind of... it's like, you're like, you're number one. And your cheaper competitor isn't really catching up, except for maybe one month. Like, like Microsoft had to fight for one six for one number one month last year. They had to fight for it really, really hard. I mean, I, cause... I forgot what they did. They threw out a billion bottles, gave it a price cut, kicked out the Connect, and whatever well, they, else they, they did. did. A lot. I mean, yeah. I, I really want to, like, I played that Forza demo and it made me really want to play Forza, like, badly. Um, that rain racing is Please awesome. don't keep talking about it or else I'm going to end up back in Xbox it, One too early. Oh, okay, well, this this is going to kind of probably kill your mood for the game. Uh, weather racing is only on select tracks. Oh. They do, they do the Gran Turismo thing. Oh. Yeah. That just that, why that, can't you guys just do the PGR thing and just throw it on every track? I mean, like freaking it rains. Is Project Gotham. How old is that goddamn game? I don't know. It, Actually, let's look it up now. Eight, Three or four. No, they, uh, PGR four is the one that had weather, and it is eight years old. I remember because I got it in two thousand seven, the same day as the orange box. That game is eight goddamn years old, and it did weather on every track. Two thousand seven. What the fuck? Wow. Like, wow. I guess it's yeah. just this whole simulations things make it difficult, but in the case of Forza, I always look at Forza and I'm just like, your cards all kind of handle the same. 
so I don't know why it's like so difficult to just put rain in it because it's basic. I mean, I guess it's actually more complicated. Than I thought where you actually have to account for road conditions and what angle this this uh, what the banking of this track has this effect on the water puddles and all that stuff. So. I guess there's like some thinking that has to be put behind whether more than just uh, whether let's reduce grip by fifty percent. Like just can you at least drive in the uh, man? Like I heard that news and I was like, are you serious? Like I was like, are you really serious right now? With well, the time um, polyphony is taking, I have no idea what they're doing with GT at this point. They, right now, they, someone is like. Man, we need to get these these dashboard like textures just right. Actually, I will approve of that. Um, I'm sorry, yeah. I enjoy in car views, and I want my dashboards I, I, to work out well. But well, that I being mean, si- like that, I can say from the demo is awesome. Like that game's like there are real time reflections off the windshield and stuff. Like that game is super pretty. Like it is. Like, I hope it's super pretty. Six is mad um, pretty. Um, like. I don't know. I don't know what's going on with Gran Turismo. They could be spending all day just like analyzing that one little link on the rear end of a Dodge Challenger for all I know for a good eight hours before they just conclude it. You know what? We need to tweak that number by point one. But I think that that I I think that that game is going to either be announced at PSX or announced D three next year. I think it's more they of a PSX to thing it within like the next like. They have to. By e- that's the, thing, the absolute latest. The thing is, I think they're going to announce it as a PSX thing because you know how they're like trying to make like their PlayStation E3 conference is kind of like a celebration of PlayStation, kind of like a bit of a party? Yeah. I kind of imagine it a little bit being a little hard for that audience to start cheering and going, woo, and partying to Gran Turismo. I mean, it sells a lot, but... It's not a Forza Horizon kind of party. Um, it's more of a very, fun. very serious thing. So I imagine it's more of a PSX thing, which I'm really hoping they talk about this year because at this point there's three Forza games now, and they're actually good Forza games. Uh, okay, well, 5 was a launch title. Horizon 2, five, I think, is pretty was cool. A, 5 was a good game. 5 was I, good. Horizon 2 was amazing. And I, now and 6 I has convinced me to... Six. Yeah, and now six has convinced me to go out and get an Xbox One in the very near future. So That's, it has been yeah. like I haven't bought a Forza since four. So I skipped Horizon, I skipped Horizon Two, and I skipped five. Like I rented those games and played them for like a week or two, but I haven't like bought them. And I'm like very much in the mood to like sit down with a good racing game. So that's why I've been sitting here like thinking like, well, you know, I could pick this up. Um. God damn! There's just so much stuff coming out this year that's like maybe I should wait, especially because I I, <laughs> I am very happy Metal Gear exists because it, it's making me very patient for everything else. Yeah, Metal Gear is definitely like slowing my mood to play anything else. Like it's it's unfortunate I don't have the time, and then I'm spending my entire weekend at a wedding. Uh, so it's like oh nope no more Metal no Metal Gear this week either. So, um. Yeah, so, I don't know. Yeah, we'll uh, see what happens. Because um, they won't, uh, part of me was like, well, if they do announce a price, could it'll be at PlayStation, PlayStation Experience, but no, they want to do that because it's after Black Friday. They wouldn't want to do that. I can, they, uh, if they do a price cut, they need to announce it like ASAP. It's feasible for them to do a price season. cut because there is a PS4 hardware revision that's either out now or soon will be. Where they, you know, oh, it's cheaper to make and they're going to change a couple things. And I think instead of like those touch buttons and touch eject buttons that came with the original system, they're going to be replaced with actual buttons, I think. Something like that. Yeah, something. They're doing like some minor physical revisions to the thing. So, you know, it's been two years. Yeah. Got to, there are ways to make the system cheaper now. Right, right. Well, the other small announcement they made is their VR headset is no longer called Project Morpheus. It is called PlayStation VR. They didn't really provide any information on it, but that's a thing. So it is no longer called Morpheus. 
PlayStation VR. PlayStation any, Blend name, got it. Uh, any uh, excitement for their headset, guys? I just I don't. I haven't heard there. anything new from it for a while now. Like when they announced it, every uh, when they announced it, it was really interesting. It's like ooh, a possible affordable headset maybe and. I don't know. I just haven't heard any news about it for a while now. It's gonna have. They're gonna have to have a presence with that at uh, PlayStation Experience because you're right. Like since they've announced it, they haven't really. Like I was expecting a lot of talk about it at E3, and there was none. So they're gonna have to talk about it at PlayStation Experience. But yeah, I'm just I'm with Bronze and like virtual reality. It's cool, but I'm not into playing games with a big thing on my head. Just not for me. Like, it's like, but like I play. I, I like. I, I play understand. With and those are. Go ahead. I understand color television. I understand it. it doesn't need any extra peripherals. You just use your eyes and you can see color. That was huge. Um, same thing with HD. You can use your eyes. You don't have to do anything special to your body or put anything on to see HD. You see HD. With 3D. Well, I guess you can kind of have 3D with the 3DS where you could fool your eyes into thinking it's there's a 3D thing going on there by doing some stereoscopic even then, I'm thing. Not, I'm not a fan of that. Yeah, even then, it only works at very specific angles and that kind of stuff. And then right. the other 3D is like glasses. With VR, you have to put something on your head. With Google Glasses, it's, you have to put on glasses. And with VR, you got to put this headset on your head, which they can make it as light as they want, but it's still a thing that has to be strapped to your head. So it doesn't fall off. Like I, I wear headphones during video games. I'm like, like, a even seven, I eight, don't wear headphones. Headphones drive me nuts. The only time I wear but, headphones is when I'm streaming. Like a set of A forties is the only time. I, like, I, I wear A thirties right now, and I've used A forties. And like, using A forties is the only time I've ever been like headphones are completely comfortable the entire time I'm using these. Yeah. So I don't know. Like it's, uh, it's like VR could be cool, but it's also one of those things where I'm just like VR is technically very, very impressive from a tech viewpoint. As far as practical uses, that is to be determined. Right. It's the same thing with Hololens. We're all blown away what you can do with Minecraft with Hololens and all that kind of stuff. But practical uses, oh man, let me watch. Let me let me watch uh, TV on that wall while trying to cook food. I I don't know. That's the the digital. Future. Oh man, let me bring Hololens to work. Thanks to its four G connection, I can watch the football game at work and not get work done. Which, by the way, NFL I mean, season has started. Tangent. Thank God. Oh my God, I'm so like, yeah, B- Buffalo Wild like. Buffalo Wild Wings was more packed than it'll be till the Super Bowl, but it was worth it because, dear Lord, football's back. Thankfully. Um, All right. but yeah, but PlayStation VR. I wanna, I wanna like try it out, but I feel like I don't really want to because I don't know they haven't said anything about it. And there was a point when VR was kind of huge because it was like, ooh, Oculus Rift and Project Morpheus. And now it's like, I haven't heard anything from both of those in a while. Right. Like, what like what progress have they made? Is there anybody that's supporting this stuff? Is this more than a graduate experimental project and the thing is it's going to be expensive too this thing i if i get my guess this thing's probably going to be 200 250 bucks so how many people are going to actually buy it you know hmm. no one wants to do, spend a lot of money developing for something no one buys so that's yeah. the thing to take into account i don't know who knows maybe it could be a huge success i just I don't know. They're gonna have to have I, a killer I app. That's what always happens. Like, like they had like PlayStation Move, and I was PlayStation Move actually sold really well, believe it or not. But it's just the fact that it would like connect. Why did Connect sell well? Because it had killer apps like Dan Central. Like Dan Central 
was a huge selling point for the Kinect. And Sony's going to have that, have that with the Morpheus, or uh, PlayStation VR. <laughs> so, I don't know. We'll VR movies? Down. Maybe? Oh, I don't know. I mean, you, like, let's take movies to the next step by immersing you even further into Middle Earth. Or Star Wars Episode Seven, or um, actually, if they I don't, like, what do you think would happen if they put Star Wars Episode Seven on PlayStation VR movies? Because the world is like Star Wars nuts right now. If anything, I actually heard on the news that they just like recently started putting merchandising out, and people are eating it up like crazy. Ah. Uh, uh... I don't know. I don't know. What we'll to see? Like I said, that person experience, they have to show something. So maybe then we'll see. Who knows? Maybe this. Maybe, <laughs> maybe they'll just go on next year. Ever, but I doubt like, it. I mean, what you know? We're we're probably all going to PSX. It's in San Francisco in December, so you know. And none of us have tried it either yet. So yeah, because like the lines at E three are just crazy. Like every year, the the lines for that VR stuff are just insane, and we don't go to PAX where they're surprisingly more reasonable. But uh. well, yeah, because at E three, everyone's wanting to check it out because they want to ch- they want to cover it. Versus PAX, people are like, yeah, we don't really care about VR, so um, so I don't know. Uh I, mean, I think if they do a Star Wars one, it'll sell like crazy. I think that PS4 Star Wars bundle is going to be insanely hard to get. Oh, yeah, that's going to sell really well, because there's been a lot of hype for a ba- about new Battlefront, and the new Battlefront is looks really sick, so... Biggest blockbusters on um, PlayStation? Destiny? Star Wars? Games that also run the other platform. The, the, but the, the, advertised they're, they're on PlayStation. Yeah, they're running the Microsoft playbook from like what they did oh, yeah. for the 360. It's like I think that's gonna change going. I think this is the last year we really have this problem. At least I hope so. Look, look, at look at this point, 2016. Like we've got Uncharted coming out in March. We have Horizon coming out. Um, I, I I love Bloodborne, man. But like it's Bloodborne. Like I I have the major PS4 exclusives. That's like if Bloodborne, Killzone. Infamous, and then the remake of The Last of Us, and the, everything else is like smaller indie titles, most of which are multi-platform as well. Coming from the person who's owned like a PS4 for like a good year now, and owns pretty much multi-plats and Drive Club, next year better be the most awesome year ever for the for the PS4. Oh, I mean, it's, not even for like the most awesome for PlayStation because I've just been sitting around. And I'm like the only thing that I'm using my PS4 for is multi-plats like Shadow of Mordor, Dragon Age, Metal Gear, and Drive Club. That's I mean, literally it. It's just like they, so I basically gotta, bought a system to play mostly multi-plats. I mean, they to, to like play with friends, I guess, because well, it depends on where your friends are. But, you know, like, I look over to what's coming out on that thing next year uh, that's exclusive, and it's like Yakuza 6, you know, there's Yakuza 6, Street Fighter, uh, Uncharted, Horizon, um, you know, like, that, there's, there's a good amount coming out for that thing next year that's just on it. Um, yeah, but it better feel like the best year ever for PlayStation because, like... Like you've got the sales, but you don't really have the games to convince oh. me quite yet. Well, it's the same situation with PlayStation Three. Like the first couple of years with PlayStation Three were pretty rough. They've yeah, but nobody to... bought it, and it showed too. So they had to get their act here. Now it's just like, oh, we're selling so many systems, and I'm like, yes, but I would like you know something well, more than just Drive Club. You yeah, know? well, they're selling so many. So, like another thing that's different from PS3 is their services don't suck. Like, like, like the interface for the PS4 is way better than the Xbox One. It's faster. The, like, just everything about it is better, except for some of the media functionality, versus the PS3, which was just so much worse than the 360. So much worse than the 360. So, 
you know, they got they got the interface advantage. They got the this is probably where your friends are playing advantage. You know, shit like that. So you end up with a system where it's like, yeah, we can kind of wait on the exclusives right now. Especially because, like I said, there are exclusives for the platform. A lot of them are either indie or, you know, like kind of not the biggest of the big. But they're still there. Like, yeah. Right. All right, moving on to another... I'd say pretty big announcement during the Tokyo Game Show: Kingdom Hearts HD 2.8 Final Chapter can, Prologue. Can, can we? Can you not? Uh, can you fucking not? <laughs> I eat, like I don't know anything about about like Kingdom Hearts. I'm like they're just trying to drag it out to get yeah, people like, just hanging over the edge as desperately as uh, possible right, for so, Kingdom Hearts 3 2.8 so, 2.9 so, 2.9 5 4. So, so what, like, 1.5 and 2.5, like, the each the HD remakes of 1 and some side stories, 2 and some side stories, I'm like, alright, th- that makes sense. But do we really need a goddamn HD remake of Dream Drop Distance, a 3DS game, and then, like, two side stories that are apparently being made just for this? Like, come, just... Come on! Don't Come. forget Kingdom Hearts Chi back cover the movie. Uh, okay. <laughs> That's all right. Um, dear Lord, like the, So at the Disney Expo, they learned that Kingdom Hearts Three will have a world based on Big Hero Six, and like, and they've teased, and like, they finally had gameplay. Like, you couldn't play it, but they had gameplay to show at E3 this year, and you're like, finally, next year. It'll come out next year. And, like, I, oh, my God. This, like, this hurts. This, this just, like, as a Kingdom, as someone who really enjoyed Kingdom Hearts 2, and I even enjoyed some of those side games, I'm just like, just come, come on already. Just, just please stop this. Stop the insanity. Like, it has been... It'll be ten years next year since the second game. Ten goddamn years. Oh but my god. Money. Um They'll buy it. Cause they know you want it. Let's see, like Or at least right. they know a lot of fans will want it, even though they're pissing them off. But Square Enix no, is good at pissing no, fans off no, anyways. No, like I talked to Ray, who is the biggest Kingdom Hearts fan he knows, and he's super excited about this. And like when he said that I was like, fuck you. Fuck you for being excited for this. No. No. They they are literally <laughs> screwing with you at this point. No, stop this. Do not buy this. They could put out a five dollar iOS Kingdom Hearts game and he would buy it, right? He, yes. He probably would. And I'm just like, stop like no. There, there's a point where you have to say no. And this is it. Like just just give me three or fuck off. Uh like this needs to stop. The thing is, is that Square Enix has had a good history of doing this. Like, how long did it take for a Final Fantasy Final Fantasy Seven remake to happen? Y- like, you know, you know, like last year's PSX. But okay, so at least in that case, they're just re-releasing the first game. There's only like two. Sp- there's two spin-off games to Kingdom Hearts or the to Final Fantasy Seven, and then just they're remaking the first game a whole bunch. I'd be less mad at that. Like, oh, okay, they're they're porting this game to, like, 50 other platforms. Like, that's fine. That's okay. Like, just port it as much as you want. But to to be like, hey, man, we're going to keep releasing these weird, dumb side stories. And it's like, okay, that's annoying, but whatever. To, we're going to re-release the original game to those weird, some dumb side stories in HD. To, we're going to release the last weird, dumb side story and create two side story side stories to release in HD because double middle fingers to you. you know, you'll so, buy it anyway. Didn't, you idiots. Like, didn't 2.5 come with some side stories? Well, okay, 2.5 came with... Um, it came with the second game and it okay. came with Birth by Sleep, which is like the PSP game. And what else did it come with? Uh, it came out with one other thing. 
No, I just... I, I hate this so much. You have no idea how, like, it just infuriates me. Just... I know, it's just... To me, I just look at it as... This is Square Enix just dragging everything out so people are, are hanging over the edge as desperately as possible. So when 3 does come out, it will be overhyped. Like, okay, so they don't need to do this. There is more than enough hype for Kingdom Hearts 3. Just like, announcing it sent people just, crazy. Just, like, give us a goddamn release date. Just, or a window. Not even a date. Just be like, Q4 2016. No, no, we're going to keep releasing these asinine side stories that, like, officially no one cares about. Nobody cares. Well, some Nobody... well, bronze people care if they're doing it because that means people are buying it. <sighs> that, yes, and in that worse. case, we'll be like, great, because people aren't exactly. Uh, oh, what's the, the word? The, the last part of that Kingdom Hearts 2.5, it was recoded, which is the DS game, uh, 358 uh, slash two days. <laughs> uh, just the cinematics for that and, like, all high res and stuff. Which, okay, like three hours of cinematics, I guess. Kingdom Hearts the movie. Ah, God, this is just... Invisible. I'm also, like, kind of concerned. It's like, so if I want to play Kingdom Hearts 3, do I have to, like, play all of this stuff to have an idea what the world is like before I can play 3? That's, okay, so... Because, the, like, the last... Do, like, do you want to get caught up on Kingdom Hearts lore? Because I can give you the path to take. Okay? Get... 1.5 and play everything on that disc. Have fun with that terrible card game one. Uh, and then get 2.5 and play everything on that disc slash watch the movie on that disc. And you will be all caught up after about 130 hours of video games. Wow. Have fun. Uh, okay. Or you can do what Tori did and go online and just watch all the cinematics. You're yeah, cool. that probably sounds better for me. Yeah, that that'll take you about that'll take you about twelve hours in comparison. Um, yeah, like this is just infuriating. I'm so like I as someone who identifies as like a Kingdom Hearts fan, I'm so done with this. Like I'm not a super fan like Ray is, or like even John. John identifies as like a Kingdom Hearts super fan, and I'm like, okay, that's fine. But who just why? Like, okay, this contains Dream Drop Distance, the 3DS game. Okay, maybe you didn't play it. Like, that's fine. It was kind of... A, it was like early in the 3DS life cycle. Uh, a scenes from Unchained X called Bat Cover that sets the tales of the four, the Foretellers, which... Is that a game? Is that a movie? They don't say. And then the final part of the collection is Birth by Sleep 0.2. A fragmentary passage, which is a completely new part of Birth by Sleep, taking after the events of Birth by Sleep told from the perspective of Aqua. Exciting. <laughs> oh, done. Like, this is, this is just like, this isn't beating a dead horse. This is beating the skeleton of a dead horse. You know, just... Yeah, oh. I couldn't agree with that. It's just like, just give us three. Heck, I might play it. But if I feel, but like from my viewpoint, having never played Kingdom Hearts, I know a single thing about it other than what it looks like. I'm, I'm like, Kingdom so Hearts, I'm ready for three. Yeah, but I just sit here and I look and I'm like, ah. and to me, it just kind of seems a little overwhelming. It's just like, how much do I need to know to actually play three? Do I need like? Oh my goodness, they just made the pile bigger. Like, just... it It's so sad. It's so sad. Like, those first two games were just beloved by, like, everyone. And then that DS game was kind of cool. And then they're like, oh, let's do the PSP game. Now let's, let's, like, do this weird PS2 remake of that Game Boy game no one liked. Oh, let's make a 3DS game. Let's make, like, five cell phone games. You know, like, just... That, no, ugh. They're going where the money is, man. That's, fair enough. Like, because some idiot keeps buying this. So By idiot, you mean our intern. 
Yes. <laughs> but someone, yeah, someone's yeah, someone. Yeah, just like put out three because it's like uh, if if I like. I mean, I understand that Kingdom Hearts 3, it's like, yeah, there's a 3 on it. It kind of makes sense that you need to play some previous games and you want to completely understand everything. But at, like, but as a person who's like, you know what, everyone's excited about this. Maybe this is my chance to finally understand what Kingdom Hearts is about without having to play through 120 hours of previous games. And I just look at this, I'm like, the pile, the catch-up pile just got bigger. Oh, dear. Like, like they, they better announce a hell a hell of a way to catch up that isn't all this like maybe the the beginning of their game has like a three hour you know primer i guess you remember when mass effect had that comic yeah that was a good i that was a good one and they didn't have to like they didn't have to say you know what you need to play your ios games and read all the books and you know do all the re- play all the spin-offs in order for us to for you to even understand remotely what is happening in Mass Effect 3. Fair enough, yeah. Yeah, like I just kind of feel like maybe that yeah, they like, could come up with a nice way to help people just kind of catch up or maybe have like some better way of saying, "Okay, here are the major plot points you need to know about Kingdom Hearts in general." Yeah, a lot of details are going to be no, lost, but here's no, the major plot what, points. What are my favorite things? What are my absolute favorite things for like that i've ever seen on the internet involving kingdom hearts is like we're gonna try and explain kingdom hearts as simply as possible and it ended up being like eight paragraphs long it, like that like this is stuck up its own butthole more than metal gear is and that's saying something oh uh, like it, it is this is ridiculous so just and the worst part about this is when 3 comes out, I'm going to absolutely buy it. If it ever comes out. Yeah, that game's probably coming out next year. It has to come hey, out Hey, it could year. be worse. You could not know it's coming at all. Like, here I'm sitting here. I was like, where's Gran Turismo? Well, yeah. Like, what you, they're you working know, on? You, like, Gran Turismo you know does have... coming, though. You know that's coming. Like, that it's is the coming, but they haven't said anything yet. Like, it's just... Like, what is it? Like, what progress did they make in Gran Turismo? They actually released two new cars concept project artistic cars for gt6 from three years ago well i mean that that has to imply that they are working on gt7 like that's what that maybe either that or they're just like racing for gts through their parking garage yeah so who knows anyway continuing yeah let's continue um, so Destiny's been having a lot of things going on. Recently, the 2.0 patch came out, and the Taken King has been released. Have any of you guys... I haven't played Destiny since pretty much a few weeks after launch. I haven't touched it since. Have any of you guys played uh, Destiny recently? I... So, about a month ago, I got completely caught up to get ready for this expansion. And then I stopped because... Madden came out, and Metal Gear came out, and Mario Maker came out, and Forza is out, and Persona 4 Dancing All Night is out in like a week, and Rock Band is out like in two weeks. So what happened was, is uh, I, you know, like I, all these other games are coming out, and I did not want to go back and play the completed version of Destiny. I mean, that one-year beta was really cool. Like that was a cool one year beta. I feel more games should do a one year beta. But uh I don't think they should make you pay sixty dollars for it. But uh but yeah, I don't know. I've heard good things about Taking King. Like I, I like people have been flipping out all over my uh Facebook feed and my Twitter feed, but I'm just not I am not inclined to pick it up until I have more free time. So How about you, Anthony? You bought your PlayStation 4 for Destiny. Yeah, let me just say I'm not exactly happy about that decision. I'm not exactly angry about it because... Oh, I'm not exactly that angry about it because it's like, yeah, eventually I'm going to own a PlayStation anyway. You know what, Destiny? You know what? We had fun with Destiny as a staff for a good month before we all just dropped it. (laughs) I mean... (laughs) Yeah, we, we like like the whole, all, like that was like the only game that kind of I think that's the only game that I could think of that literally the entire staff got together and said, you know what, 
yeah let's do this mission together and you know it was it was kind of fun it was just the story was just a mountain of vague and the content was five um objectives repeated um but yeah same story uh once i got my once i got destiny played it and once everyone else stopped i just dropped it and i'm just like yep this is a game that you play with friends you can't really just play this alone like i just i just don't play shooters alone and unless it's gears of war 2 then i just play the same mission over and over practicing sniping and i did play destiny alone for a little bit when everyone was too busy like uh crucible i don't know what was it but i was weirdly good at all those um waypoint captures in crucible regardless of whether we want to like i would have and it was really polarizing one match i would get like 0.53 and but then after that it would be 1.2 1.3 like i somehow was just i was just i think i'm like i'm like pretty decent at destiny that kind of shocked me considering i had the last shooter that i played was like halo reach in 2010 the destiny shooting feel like regardless like, of all the like yeah like if you get rid of all the stuff surrounding it like the shooting in destiny is incredible like that is the best shooting on a console game out there right now like it just feels so good especially when you have like a really good gun like, it, it it just feels right just perfect it's just everything surrounding that game is crap or was crap. Now it's less crap. Like I did a Bronson soapbox on it, and like after playing, where I'm like, oh yeah, cool. Like, like if that was a one year beta and I didn't pay sixty dollars for that, I probably would have been way more okay with Destiny. So, all right. Well, on to the news related to Destiny. So you guys have been have you guys been following this big lawsuit? Going on between Marty O'Donnell oh, and Bungie. Oh, the the yeah, the Marty thing. Yeah, that sucks, man. They're they're real dicks over there, at Bungie, for this. Like, I'm just saying, like this dude, like was one of the founders of your company, and obviously cared for Bungie quite a bit. Like, are you, you know, was like, it the, Bungie that was fighting, or was it Activision fighting it? I, it was well, it was Bungie. So I mean, like everyone at Bungie comes off as real pricks because of this. So, what exactly was this lawsuit about? I know Martin O'Donnell got fired from well, that place. Uh, Nick will go into it because he has the story. Well, that's actually not the news story I was talking about. Well, oh. this is a, yeah. Can you explain, Bronson? Because I actually don't know too much about. Okay, the so like Marty O'Donnell, uh, like he had a bunch of back pay and holiday pay and things of that nature, uh, and like they were refusing to pay it up, and he's like, "Yo, peace out." Uh, and he quit, and then, like, has been in a bunch of lawsuits, and Bungie's been trying to string these lawsuits out as much as humanly possible, uh, and things of that nature, and hold on, like, they actually had a pretty good, uh, news story about it, uh, on Yeah, because what I'm talking about, there's actually some leaked documents that had, to, well, not leaked, but documents that had to be revealed through the courts that, uh, I'll talk about that while Bronson looks at that, so... Oh, here we go, here we go. I, I, got it? Okay. I, I just got it. If Google will load it for me. Um, okay, so uh, let's see. A court appointed arbitrator ruled this week that Bungie violated its contract with O'Donnell when it fired him with, quote, without cause and made him give up his company stock and drop out of Bungie's profit sharing plan. Uh, O'Donnell will be awarded uh, $142,000 with its first payment. A previous settlement from Bungie uh, President Harold Ryan awarded uh, O'Donnell $95,000 for unpaid work and uh, vacation time and legal fees. O'Donnell is entitled to recover $192,187.5 Bungie shares, the value of which is unknown. Uh, the veteran composer filed a lawsuit in early May 2014, claiming Ryan had denied him pay for things like unused vacation time, paid time off, and other benefits, all of which Bungie's policies dictate he would get. Uh, Ryan and Bungie responded a month later, denying the allegation, and started uh, and stating O'Donnell was not entitled to relief requests or any relief whatsoever. 
Uh, what might be more interesting is the paper shine light on events surrounding O'Donnell's events, and it would ter- which came with his termination in April of last year. Um, Games B does a great summary of the events, which I'll pull up in a minute. Uh, the music created for Destiny, uh, along with he created the music for Destiny along with Paul McCartney. Uh, Let's see. He was in, he was uh, accused of general insubordination in the week of E3's 2013 music trailer swap. Uh, for his part, the composer claimed in the court papers that he was fighting back against the effect Activision was having on Bungie's culture in court papers. O'Donnell says he was trying to preserve Bungie's spirit in the face of Activision's encroachment into artistic decisions. But eventually O'Donnell was let go. So through this um, ongoing legal battle, some documents were revealed regarding Destiny and their release plans. So Destiny was originally supposed to be released on September 24th, 2013, but due to significant changes with the game's story, it was delayed a year. What makes this even more interesting is they were planning to release Destiny 2 on September 30th, 2015, which would be two weeks from today, two weeks from when we're recording this anyway. Um, with a third Destiny releasing September 30th, 2017, and a fourth Destiny releasing on September 30th, 2019. So they liked the date September 30th, for some reason. And then, meanwhile, while the document cited as being the largest downloadable content product, so pretty much the biggest downloadable for release for the game, was supposed to be coming out September 30th, 2020. So, yeah. So they were planning to release a new Destiny every two years, and then release a huge expansion in 2020. All right, so I have... I'm just going to throw this out there. All of because this keep just... In mind, let's keep in mind the deal they have with Activision, where they have to release, I think it's a certain amount of games under the Destiny brand. So I wouldn't be surprised if we see Destiny 2 next year. I really want to be surprised. I, I, I just want to throw this out there. They're due here. Hearing... Th- their contract says three games. So Three games, yeah. I think it was a 10-year publishing deal, I think it was. It was 10 years, three games. That's okay. what it was. Hearing all of this, the lawsuit and the whole, their plans for Destiny. Wow, this sounds really effed up. Oh, it gets better. Like, let me tell you, I I pulled up. It's this like over on game oh, down. It's like, well, I don't am. I'm not a fan of what Activision is doing to Bungie. Okay, we're gonna kick you out. And we're not gonna pay you anything because you decide to say no to MegaCorp. It's okay. I'm gonna win a lawsuit and make it like th- like this. I'm makes less me like, far, like wow. This, this this makes me far less. Inclined. This is just like confirming the horror story of what happened the moment they Activision just said. Activision Bungie's like, yep, we're 10 years as partners, and, every, and that was just kind of like, there's, there's, this can't be, like, there's gonna, something bad's gonna happen, right? Like, I'm, I'm very curious to find out, like, this happened with Infinity Ward, this happened with Bungie, like, I'm very curious to why this has not happened with Blizzard. Like, why? Like, what, what is the difference in culture that Blizzard tells them to step off? You say that now, Bronson. Watch, it's going to happen. I'm, they announced the new World of, War, uh, World of Warcraft. It's gonna they have can't. Well, well, Act, it's going to have Activision all over it. Well, all well, right. well, here's the thing, though, is that Activision probably would not have told... Activision probably would have preferred uh, Blizzard to, la- to launch their botched Titan MMO because of the amount of time and money they dumped into it. But they didn't. It was canceled. Like, I, Activision, I, I'm pretty sure at, at this point, knowing the record, Activision is probably okay with an okay product. But, I, and Titan might have turned out okay, but it actually got canceled instead. I, I think because of the way they merged that the company is named Activision Blizzard, awarded Blizzard a certain amount of power to where they could tell Activision to go step off. That's That's what I pretty much think happened. Um... But no, so the full, full Bungie story. This is... Alright, so the publishing deal happened in April 2010 uh, and was set, like you said, original release date 2013. Uh, Pete Parsons, chief operating officer of Bungie, asked O'Donnell to create all the music for the Destiny franchise at the same time rather than writing the themes one at a time for each game. Uh, 
O'Donnell composed a symphonic suite of eight movements, working with the legendary ex Beatle Paul McCartney. And I did recorded... not know Paul McCartney was involved with Destiny. That's interesting. Yeah. Uh, and recorded that music in early 2013, dubbed the music as Fears. The music will be used throughout the Destiny franchise, at least that was the plan. O'Donnell worked with the audio team on sound design, sound effects, and cinematics. The court papers say that Activision had little enthusiasm for the music of the Spheres as a standalone work, and O'Donnell became increasingly frustrated that Bungie was making insufficient effort to release it. During E3 2013 preparations, Bungie was getting ready for the demo for the first time before a huge audience. Uh, Activision was going to play the game music with a trailer, uh, play the game music with a trailer, but shortly after E3, Activision took over the trailer work and supplied its own music rather than the music of Spheres. Uh, of course, O'Donnell acted re- angry, ugh, angrily and believed Activision had overstepped its uh, role by assuming artistic control of the trailer music. Ryan, the CEO of Bungie and management, shared his concern and filed a veto letter with Activision, which overruled the objection. During E3, O'Donnell tweeted that Activision, not Bungie, had composed the trailer music. He also threatened Bungie employees in an attempt to keep the trailer from being posted online and interrupted briefings. Uh, the court filings say that O'Donnell believed that he was preserving Bungie's creative process, artistic integrity, and reputation, keeping faith with fans, and protecting Bungie and its intellectual property from Activision's encroachment. According to O'Donnell's view, the Band of Brothers ethos that had inspired the group earlier work was being damaged by the Activision relationship. Uh, let's see. Ryan and other Bungie men felt his conduct, quote, hurt the Bungie team, hurt the game, drove a negative online discussion and violated Ryan's instructions. They also believe that O'Donnell was elevating his interest in publishing music as fears over his best interest of the company. Activision advised Bungie that O'Donnell's conduct may be a... uh, Constitute a breach of the party's contract. Uh, Ryan recommended that O'Donnell be fired. He wasn't fired, but his conduct was considered, quote, unacceptable in his performance review. O'Donnell objected to the review as he noted that Bungie presented no evidence of permanent damage to the Bungie activated relationship, the audio team, or Ultimate Game Sales. When Destiny planned for a September 2013 release, the story was substantially revised in August 2013. That pushed the release back to March 2014. O'Donnell returned to work after a vacation, but the audio team and his supervisor did not consider him to be fully engaged in his work. The release day of the game, meanwhile, pushed to September 2014. Bungie set in motion a process to terminate O'Donnell. Meanwhile, O'Donnell argued that audio work could not be completed until the game was a bu- was in a bug-free playable state. He felt the treatment was unfair, but he can- would continue his work. Members of the team complained O'Donnell wasn't contributing as expected, as presidents was frustrating the completion of the audio work. Bungie proposed, or Ryan proposed that Bungie, uh, the Bungie board terminate O'Donnell. So, yeah. There you go. Uh, Wow. Yeah. uh, This is like O'Donnell wants to preserve integrity, people in the, like head guys, and Bungie thought, you're not listening to our instructions. You're being a pain to work with. You're gone. Yeah, so it goes on to say uh, his original stock ownership agreement uh, would give up his unvested founder shares if he left voluntarily without uh, without cause, which he didn't. Uh, the company chose not to pay him his accrued and unused vacation time unless he waived his uh, his stocks. So O'Donnell sued. He won the right to get his vacation pay and his stocks. Um, let's see. What else? What else? What else? What else? What else? Um, yeah, and the, the, like now they're saying that the reason they didn't release uh, the music was because, like, oh, it's because we were in court with them. Uh, um, in return, O'Donnell is required to return any Bungie property that was not specifically gifted to him. Copies of this, a CD version of Music of Spheres, and O'Donnell has already done so. Bungie appealed to primarily the pre- preliminary ruling by arbitrator and the, the appeal was denied. O'Donnell has since gone on to make his own game company, Highwire Games. So. Fun stuff. Yeah. Uh, you know, like, man, the, 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 like everyone's nightmare about Activision buying Bungie happened, right? Like, like Yeah. Like you, how do you tell Marty O'Donnell to screw off, right? Like, how do you tell this guy who is the, literally the thing is, is that 
Mario O'Donnell was at Bungie when Bungie was working closely with Microsoft, right? And this didn't really, this wasn't really a problem. Yeah, how do you? But then it became like, like the thing is, is that they say is like, well, Mario O'Donnell didn't follow our instructions, and he was being a pain, so we fired him. And I kind of understand that. Yeah, if an employee's being a pain and uncooperative, yeah, it would make sense I, they're fired. But how come this didn't happen when Halo was being made? Uh, also, like. When you are a guy like Marty O'Donnell, you, you get a certain amount of, you know, ability to kind of do whatever you the hell you want as long as you're getting your job done and it's of a of a high level of quality. And you know, you're one of the founders of the company. You're the dude who made the music for Halo. You know, like some of the most popular, influential game music ever. You know, like, you're that guy. You are the Halo guy. Um, you know, like, that's... Ooh, that's bad. That's really bad. Yeah, it's like, uh... Like, um, it's... Man, yeah, yeah, this is like, there's not, there's really no black and white here. It's just like... The thing is, is that I'm kind of on O'Donnell's side because it's like this wasn't a problem when Bungie was making Halo with Microsoft. Yeah, like... When that, like, that's the thing. If O'Donnell had, like, a long history... A long history of being uncooperative, okay, maybe Activision Bungie has a point. But the thing was is that this... I, I didn't hear anything about O'Donnell doing this when they made Halo. But, and... At the same time, it's like... If you're being uncooperative and a pain at any job, you would be fired from any job because chain of command. But like one did have a problem with Microsoft. Yes, and, that like, that that to me that's the big one right there. I'm just what, like what, Donald did was, fine was with Bungie and Microsoft. Like the that music from that he composed would end up in Destiny, and Destiny does have really great music. Um, you know, so it's just like, like, nothing about this says to me what Activision did is okay. Like, nothing about this. Anyway. Um. Yeah. Well, talking about buying of companies, there's been a big rumor lately that CD Projekt Red is going to be acquired by EA. And... <sighs> Thank God this is not happening because we probably have a similar situation where The Witcher would go from being an amazing game where they have DLC that provides a ton of content for a reasonable price to completely being ruined with microtransactions and worthless DLC. Here's the thing. Why do they need CD Projekt Red and The Witcher when they have Dragon Age? Because the last Dragon Age game was crap. No, no, no. I'm just saying why would they need The Witcher... To ruin when they already got Dragon Age. That's, because I, it's like I play Dragon Age and The Witcher, and they're both quite similar games. It's just like the, it's just with the case of Dragon really Age, you have more character customization other, as far as you know, race and low story bits. Well, uh, so you said that EA might be playing Project Red, no, but no, it's no, not that happening. Was the rumor that was the rumor, but thankfully, CD Project Red's chief executive Adam Kaczynski has released a public statement, quote, Usually we do not comment on rumors, but it's time to deny the one about TakeOver because it's spread too far. In the name of the board, I would like to state, no, we are not in any talks about the sale of CD Projekt Red or GOG, which is like their Steam competitor. Also, the document verifying the identity credentials of the source is not real. So that's very, um, very, very relieving. The, the thing was is, is that can you imagine by EA, I'd be quite pissed. The, the scary thing too is that good old games, which is like Steam, uh, is owned by CD Projekt. Right. So you could so boom origin. Ugh. But good news is that at least according to that statement, it's not happening because I sit here and I'm like, good old games doesn't seem that bad. Witcher 3, I really like. EA, uh... Yeah. 
Yeah. That would have been awful. Because CD Projekt Red, just because of the way that... Well, first of all, The Witcher 3 is amazing, but the way they're handling the DLC, like the amount of content they're providing for the price, I mean, they're handling it very... And the amount of free content they gave, like that's something that would definitely not have flown by if they were under EA's roof. So... All right. Yep. So, the man... At... I continue to be right about the, that whole indie game thing. Super kind of happy about that. All right. So, uh, do you have any other news stories? Because I got that is all the news I've got. All right. So, uh, we got Sony announced a bunch of stuff at Tokyo Game Show. Beyond what we talked about earlier, there is a new Bloodborne expansion. The new Bloodborne DLC, The Old Hunters, will be available November 24th, and a special edition of Bloodborne that includes The Old Hunters DLC will be available on December 3rd. Bloodborne has gone to sell 2 million copies so far. There will be a new story, uh, the tale of hunters who once made Yarnum their hunting ground, new NPCs, new bosses, new weapons, new outfits, and magic. That's a big deal. Okay. Yeah. All right. Any, anyone here inclined to check out Bloodborne finally? Besides, um, me? yeah, I need I need to check it out. I need uh, to. So one of the most popular PlayStation Vita games, Gravity Days, or as it's known in the states, Gravity Rush, is coming to PS4 on December 10th in Japan and February 2016 for Europe and North America. They also announced that uh, Gravity Days 2 will be coming to the States and the rest of the world in 2016. Nice. Cool. Yeah, that, that, that was a really good game. So, hell yes. For I wonder honor... when Sony's just going to retire the Vita. I mean, at this point, I mean, I'm surprised you can still find the Vita on just, store shelves. Just stop. Uh, you, you could just tell at E3. It's just like, here's the Vita two minute statement. Moving forward hey, to. Man. PlayStation Morpheus two minute statement. Okay, now let's talk about, about PlayStation View. Play. That's the best thing about the Vita's remote play. The Shovel Knight, bro. That game was pretty great. Um. Anyway, moving forward, uh, they re- they announced a new IP uh, for Honor Oni Hero, which is a Oni Samurai game. Not much else is said. Uh, they they have announced story DLC for Assassin's Creed Syndicate, a game that is not even out yet. For the love of God, this needs to stop. I agree. <laughs> uh, Yakuza HD remake and Yakuza Six announced. In celebration for its tenth anniversary, Yakuza is getting an HD remake. The remake uh, includes a demo of Yakuza Six. Yakuza Six is looking that is. That is only gonna. It is only gonna be on PS4, and it is set for it to come out in Japan fall of next year. Is it just me, or is this generation there like two to three times the amount of remakes as last generation? <laughs> like, this is I always keep hearing the argument of. I always keep hearing the argument of. Well, what about those who never played the game before? Then let's just re-release every game from the past. Exactly. And never have to make anything new with that logic then. Well, I mean, you, the first. But well, but it's a different games, studio. So. And I'm like, I'm sorry. It's like I hear stuff like, "No, Kingdom Hearts three, nah." It's what? It's all about one point five and two point five and two point eight. I think remakes are fine to a certain. extent. I'm ready for two point nine. Uh, it's just like Grand Theft Auto. It's just like Grand Theft Auto six. No, you want to repurchase Grand Theft Auto five uh, twice. Yeah, I'm, guilty. I'm guilty for that. I bought the game three freaking times. So, uh, and... You need a game on your PS4? Let's buy The Last of Us. Again. Uh, so, Yakuza 5, and also, Yakuza 5 is still coming to the West with all its DLC included. And the rumor continues to be sometime this year. It is a PS3? Yeah, that's a PS3 game, yo. Okay, so that system can officially retire once that happens, right? Yeah, I'm I'm totally done. Because with, Persona uh, Five is a PS4 game. Yes, that has been moved okay. to PS4. So, King of Fighters Four has been announced. 
It is coming out to arcades this year, and it's getting its PS4 release next year. Square Enix has announced a new PS Vita game! Yay! It's not gonna sell for shit. Although, it might actually sell okay in Japan. I was gonna say, it'll, like, sell in Japan. Like, it just won't sell here. Like, like everything on the Vita. Like, that, yeah. that has been the Vita's life. It will sell in Japan, just not here. Anyway, it has a serious Final Fantasy vibe, kind of like Bravely Default. Uh, it is called Saga Scarlet Grace for Vita. It is coming out sometime next year. One Piece Burning Blood and Gundam is coming out. So it's another one of their Versus games. In March 2.8 we talked about Dragon Quest Builders. The next Dragon Quest it will be out on PS4, PS3, and Vita in Japan next year. This next thing okay. actually got me excited. Danganronpa 3 is coming out on PS4 and Vita next year. Ooh, more visual novels. All the visual no court novels, puzzle solving, and murder. Like, weird murder thing. Yeah, D Danganronpa is weird. Like, those first two games were awesome games. I gave them both positive reviews. But those games are weird as hell. And they're unbelievably violent. Uh, oh. Anyway... Sony renames Project Morpheus, talked about that. Dark Souls 3 gets a fixed release date in Japan. And of course, this article I'm reading does not give that actual release date, making me go to another article. March 24th. Resident hmm. Evil is getting a spin-off which for a competitive tactical shooter called Resident Evil Umbrella Corps. Star Ocean 5 is a thing. Oh. oh, yeah. Wait, wasn't that a thing for a while now? Well, it continues to be a thing. <laughs> I, thought, I thought they announced a new Star Ocean a few months back. Oh, they put out a trailer. Put okay, a trailer. that's big then. Uh, PS4 is getting a bunch of new controllers and faceplates. Gold, silver, steel, black, and see-through crystal. New color dyes for the plastic for the PlayStation controller. Got it. And faceplate. Faceplate? Yeah, that fa that hard drive cover area. That oh, part. so painted and dyed yep. plastic pieces of plastic for your PlayStation 4. All right. Uh, so, Koei Tecmo has announced a uh, new slash em up called uh, Neo. Called Neo. It's very reminiscent of Dynasty Warriors, things of that nature. And it is coming out in PS4 in only 2016. Actually, it does look pretty cool from what I saw. And the Japanese price cut. So that was everything from TGS. $100 Last... for a Japanese price cut. You know, so back to that price cut thing, Sony may do a $50 price cut, maybe? I could see him doing 50, yeah, Because yeah, at least that would match 50. the Xbox One, and, you know, I mean, if they really wanted to crush a competition, they could slash it to 300, but why would you want to do that when you have that big of a lead? Um, yeah, I could see him possibly doing 50. So, um, last two news stories. So, on a stream about <laughs> Uncharted Collection... Uh, they, they accidentally announced Last of Us 2. Quote, when they were talking about facial animation, all the facial animation on Uncharted series was led up by Eric here. He begins, and on the first Last of Us, oh, did I say the first Last of Us? And then cut off. Well, yeah, freaking Nolan North has come out and confirmed the Last of Us 2 as well. Yeah. He said so. so he so yeah. Uh, no sure it's better to be the it's better to be the number two guy to accidentally spill it out than to be the yeah. number one guy who spilled it out. <laughs> the first that guy. game will probably come out twenty seventeen because they've got Uncharted coming out next year. So yeah, and then they'll that's have right. the Last of Us for twenty seventeen. There you go. Uh, so last news story: GameStop refuses to sell console bundles that include digital copies of games. During a recent earnings report conference call, GameStop executives outlined the decision to, quote, 
move away from, quote, digital bundles and highlight their recent efforts to provide physical bundles instead. This new strategy went into effect last month with the release of Madden 16. Uh, while other stores sold Xbox One and PS4 bundles featuring digital copies, GameStop, quote, worked with Sony, Microsoft, and EA to reach an arrangement for the retail to provide a physical copy for any new console purchase. This is an experiment. GameStop COO Tony Bartel explained that if Sony and Microsoft continue to release digital bundles, GameStop will turn to third-party physical bundles. This could mean they'll work out a deal with major publishers such as EA or Ubisoft to include a free physical copy. Great, Why, so if we want a bundle, we don't have to go to GameStop. We can go to Best Buy. Sweet. That, I was thinking that exact same thing. It's like, oh, you were so yeah, butthurt yeah. about digital copies? I'll just go across the street. Less money for GameStop. That sounds like a good plan. It's like, game. oh, you, Bronson, like Bronson has said the story a lot. It's like, oh, you don't have a copy of Game X? I'll just go across the street where they've I got will, a mountain waiting for me. I, like, they can have my money. I will, you don't. I will. I am in the mall already, and you are there, GameStop. It's just a matter of you have to be willing to supply it for me. Um. So the so why do this? Well, the gut reaction is to point out that GameStop wants people to buy physical discs. Uh, you can't buy digital games uh directly from them. But it's actually a little more complicated. GameStop executives just want you to come into the store to buy new games. The profit margin on new games haven't ever been the driving force. Instead, it wants to make sure there are used physical copies in circulation to trade in and resell games. Um, quote, it's not possible to trade in or resell digital games, which poses a big challenge to GameStop's used game business. Last quarter, used games generated about one-third of GameStop's revenue and 45% of its gross profits. Digital bundles reduce the number of available game discs in circulation, limiting ability to resell them. They um, can do whatever they want to try and get their used games to go up, but the thing is, is that there's kind of like a slow trend moving towards digital copies. Hey, digital sales. Hey, I don't, download I'm, codes. I'm and considering like, buying a four terabyte hard drive for my xbox one purely because that way i will never have to buy a hard copy all my xbox one games are digital and i'm at the point where i'm like i should just get on this train now yeah like on the wii u I, like if it weren't for like the wii u's really terrible low amount of flash storage on it i probably would have bought all my wii u games digital because well Somehow I am. Too, um, I just realized. Yes, it is a bit of a cry that I am lazy to the point where I don't feel like putting a disc in or keeping a disc around. I don't know. It's just kind of like if I'm going to buy digital copies, I want an all digital system just so I don't have to like keep flipping back and forth. But that's just um, me. But yeah, it's like PS4. It's like I think. I think maybe a third of my PS3 games are downloadable because of PlayStation Plus. Um, okay, well, so GameStop, like, like people who don't know, for whoever doesn't know this, but GameStop's big thing is they'll sell the new game for $60, buy it used for 20 to 30 and then sell it for 50 to 55 That That's how their process works. Um, I'm much more inclined to buy my used shit from Gamefly, because, like, with Gamefly, at least, like, oh, Madden just came out. I'm renting it. I want to keep it. It's forty eight bucks. Yeah, so, and if you got it at launch, then it's really not used. You got yeah, it brand new. new anyway. Yeah, I got it new for the price of used. So Yeah. I'm, yeah, support GameFly, not GameStop. Yeah. They're a good service. I, I'm ready for GameStop I, to go out of business. That'd be I've, great. I have been I have been subscribed to GameFly for eight years. That is well, Do you even read Game Informer that much? No no, Gamefly. They're stupid. Oh Gamefly, sorry. <laughs> oh crap. Yeah, well, I, I, I was thinking I thought you I was thinking GameStop with that Game Informer subscription card. thingy yeah, that no, comes with their pro no, rewards, no, get more no, money. I, I was a subscriber for that for two, three years and I was like, this is dumb, I'm stopping this. Um uh, yeah. I almost never want a company to go out of business, but GameStop is one of those. <laughs> um, I hate that store. So I wonder what the I'm revolving sure. door rate there I, is. That's why. That's why I don't. I mean, I don't oh, go in there the, at all. But dude, like they're like 
outside of a very few select people, like there there is a constant stream of people who like work at that store. Like I know a couple people there who like get set in and like become manager and shit, but the amount of people who stay with that company compared to how many get hired is so small. Like they have a they have a very, they have a pretty high turnover rate. That's for sure. I can imagine because it's I like know. oh I mean it's just really easy that if you don't really know what's going on, it's like, hey, I love video games. I could sell video games and then you find out that it is a lot more bad corporate, I would say. Just draining the soul out of it. And then you realize it's not really that much fun. At least I think that's how it is. It's basically you get exposed to retail. Yeah. I was, it was not the worst job I ever had. That is for damn sure. Well, but Bronson, most... you've had like every possible job you can think of. Yeah, I swear, I've Bronson some... has the most diverse resume I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> hey, you never know. You never know. You might need that diversity. I I have worked in the medical field, the retail field, warehouses, food service, gambling. Uh, gambling, yeah. I I was I did sell sports picks, like I casino hospitality. Um, you know, pretty much a little bit of everything. Like I have I have I have a very diverse resume. Anything. I mean, if I was an employer, I looked at his resume, I'd be like, what the fuck? <laughs> like, <laughs> seriously. <laughs> like, Well, let's be honest here. When you need a job and the economy isn't doing too great, you can't really afford to be picky. Yeah, when you, when you graduate... Oh, roofing, and uh, that's another one. But, like, when you graduate into, like, the worst possible economy, you are just, you just kind of have to, like, take whatever's there. Yeah. Um, and then when you get unsatisfied with that job from anywhere from six months to a year, you look for something else. Um, oh, political call center. That was another one. Tech support. Oh, God. Jeez. A lot of jobs. <laughs> yeah. Uh, currently, I am a... I am a, uh, I guess, God, what would be the word for it? Uh, I work in a group home, like, managing, like, intellectually disabled adults. Um, we, we actually had one of them uh, that, the, we use the term eloped, even though that's not how you're supposed to use the word, um, which means they run off. Uh, run oh, off. Man. Yeah, he ran, oh no, this happens all the time with this kid. It has literally gotten to the point where the staff just does not care. Uh, but <laughs> he, yeah, he, 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 like, the last time he eloped, though, he went to his mom's place, and because his meds are all messed up right now, and they're getting them fixed, decided it would be a good idea to steal a car. Oh, wow, that sounds like a fun client. Yeah, uh, so now, until his meds are sorted out, he has to have a 24-7 shadow. So, like, so that means instead of having one staff on grave with me, we uh, there's two. So it's me and one other person. And every other, like, every shift gets a person added to watch the shadow of this person at all times. I bet you'd love watching him. Um, like, the nights where he actually sleeps are completely fine. Like, last night... But the nights where he's like up all night and being a pain, like, are the worst. <laughs> they're, they're the they are the worst thing ever. Poor Bronson. So, um, I don't know. Like, this is better than some houses. Like, some houses have kids who like put punch holes in walls and like. Oh uh, man! Like, at Ray had this client at his house who was been like defined as the worst client in Chrysalis history. Who like he like like threw a TV through a window once. Oh my gosh. Yeah, like this this 14-year-old kid threw like a TV through a window and like set a record and punched like 37 holes in his bedroom wall. Wow. Yeah. But like one time he wanted people to make him sweet and sour chicken. And they, <laughs> they, 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 oh, this is this is funny. They wanted people to make him sweet and sour chicken, but no one knew how to. So he decided that was a good reason to punch a hole in the wall and then a <laughs> 
Yeah. So you and Ray work for the same company? Yeah. Well, our, the houses we work for are like, uh, like two miles away from each other, too. Uh, I, I just can imagine you guys every night texting each other. So what are you dealing with today? <laughs> it that has very much happened. Like especially when we both had like really bad clients. Um, like especially when we both had like really bad clients. Like that was very much a thing. It's just like so, what are you dealing with? So what are you dealing with? <laughs> um, especially on Grave Shift, because on Grave Shift you are the only person there, so you have no help. You are the help. Um. Uh, so yeah, fun stuff. It's yeah. There are no comments, by the way. I just checked. Oh come on, guys. Yeah. Oh, that's. We did get a comment on Madden review. Is it worth sixty dollars? I don't know. This is like the most time I've been spending on stuff that is an online play with Madden. So. Yeah, this I, Madden they made big improvements with the Madden this year. I, I'm actually pretty impressed with it. Especially considering they're not marketing it at all, really. Right. Did you guys did you guys see that really like awesome but dumb like Madden movie trailer? Oh, that was so bad. It was so funny. It was so funny. I was laughing the entire time. Um Anyway, uh So I guess that's it, right? Yeah. If we have no comments or questions, that does it for this week's yes. unscripted. We are on Facebook at thegameraccess.com. Follow us on Twitter at thegameraccess. And follow us on twitch.tv slash gameraccess, where we have a new donation page, which helps us get to events like PSX and things of that nature and buy capture cards and stuff like that. So we appreciate any and all donations. All right, guys. Thank you guys for listening. We will be back next week with another episode of Unscripted Access. Thank you guys for listening. Peace. Bye, we love you.